Should you EQ your 808s? Yes or no? What is going on, guys? Man, this purple hoodie, I know y'all sick and tired to see me rock it, man, but it's so damn cozy. It's purple. I love it. And I do apologize for the syncing issues with the vocals and the visuals in my videos. I do apologize. It's something that has to do with OBS, and I'm tr really trying to figure it out. It was something that messed up in this recent update. So just bear with me. I know y'all deserve better quality. It's a little shitty right now. So, But anyways... Other than that, we want to talk about EQ and 808s. I know there was a recent video. No, it really wasn't a recent video. We're talking about two or three years ago. It's old as hell to you youngsters. But uh, Carnage was in this video. It was an FL Studio video, and he was EQing his 808s. And a lot of people went ape shit on him, trying to tell him what he should and shouldn't do as far as EQing the 808s and whatnot. And I've already talked about, like, you know, if... You know, if your mix is bad, if you should put it out or what makes a bad mix in the past. And, you know, really, you know, it's no right or wrong way to mix per se. But, you know, what sounds good is good. And that's a rule that you should live by. You know, if it really does sound good, then it is good. And, you know, just get the music out there. That's far more important. But, yeah, a lot of people was trying to tell him what to do. And we all know that Carnage, despite people not liking his personality, it, his music is very popular or was very popular. I don't know. I don't really check up on him. But other than that, though, he was touring around the world and all that. His 808s, everybody loved the 808s. So, you know, personal preference. And obviously, he's winning with that formula. So we're going to explore some more. Let's cut it to everybody's favorite DAW, which is FL Studio. You love it, guys. All right. So we are in the DAW, of course. And... I do have a gang of EQs pulled up, and this is not even all of them here. I just want to make sure that I was able to use this project still because they are a bit CPU extensive uh, due to their quality level being zero latency. And I do have Maximus here, and I know a lot of you guys in the comment section are going to be like, well, Maximus is a multi-band compressor. No, nah, it, it, it is true. And also, it is a multi-band EQ as well. As if I explain this right here, where you know by default it has it on monitor, but if you go into bands here, uh, you can mess with the gain, and then you also can sweep the frequency as well. And this is a really good tool, by the way, for doing dynamic EQing. And we're, we're going to talk about the difference between a dynamic EQ and a parametric EQ in another video. So, uh, so yeah, uh, EQ and eight ways and all the stuff that you can do with it is. And that you can shape your 808 into sounding something a whole lot different. So I have this 808 here and from this beat here, and I'm going to go ahead and play the beat. All right, let me go ahead and uh, turn my uh, multi-brand <laughs> compressor here, which has an EQ built into it as well. This uh, this maximizer here has the EQ in there. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the, to the 808. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to just mute the 808. And we're going to uh, ignore the music. And there are things that you can do. I, I'll let you hear the 808 uh, without Maximus on here. And with Maximus on, uh, you can hear that it's controlling the 808, of course, because it is, again, a multi-band compressor. But uh, what you can, can do is mess with the bands here. You see, you're EQing certain things out because you're messing with the game. And what you can ultimately do is, let me go ahead and engage this right here, is you can uh, look at this spectrum. And what the spectrum will tell you is where, where the dominant low-end frequencies are at. And what you can do is you can go in there and dial in where you want to focus at. Also, with you know this multiband compressor slash dynamic EQ, uh, you can uh, do other things like uh, you can make things mono in the lower end in the lower frequency. You can solo it too. Some of you might want to solo uh, that particular part, 
and you know just mess with that lower frequency content because with when i have it on and i turn solo off you can hear more so that's enough of maximus there that's just a little bit of stuff here uh, i will be redoing another uh video for maximus i think it's important that people get a real good gist of how maximus works so uh, another EQ that is really good for just messing around with the 808s here, and I'm not going to talk about distortion in this video to a, a certain extent. I will pull up a distortion plugin by Waves that is really good at filtering out certain frequencies. It has an EQ built into it. Uh, and uh, is this right here is Neutron, uh, but we're talking about Neutron right now. So Neutron 3 Equalizer. It's a really good EQ. Uh, comparing to others, you know, they all have their preferred sound because not all EQs are made equally. So you have great visual here. So what makes this EQ, and yes it is uh, a little bit of CPU intensive here, but I do have like other EQs open and in FL, <laughs> FL is not really good at managing uh, different plugins, uh, uh, CPU, but per se, but we're going to move past that. Uh, one thing is that you can mess with the bands here and you could change the shelves. Of course, you have different shelving here and, you know, that just leads to different uh, kinds of 808s uh, in its own vibe here. So, you know, if I had this shelf on, let's uh, go ahead and uh, bypass. all subtle here so you know don't expect much so you got that all right let's add some resonate you can you can hear it tear through this cpu here but that's me that's my fault for pulling up so many plugins at once but i i got so many i got so many damn plugins that <laughs> it makes it a little difficult for me to do uh <laughs> for me to search for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete uh, Neutron 3, but that's Neutron 3 there. Uh, you're not gonna hear much in difference in that one. We're, it's gonna get better here. Here's an EQ uh, that comes stock in FL Studio, and it is uh, EQ. And EQ actually is one of the first intelligent EQs out there. I actually forgot about this one right here myself. I ain't gonna even lie to you. Uh, so what I wanna do is go ahead and play this, and, and, and it's gonna... I'm gonna hit this analyze. You gotta hold analyze for a while. And that's a different 808 from, from what we was hearing here. And I'm gonna go ahead and bypass it by hitting this button over here. Pull up EQ again. So basically, you can control certain lower end of, of the frequency uh, and change the way it sounds. Uh, with EQing an 808 in a nutshell, is that you uh, get control over certain frequencies here. And uh, one of the things I definitely want to talk about, since we're in FL Studio, is the fact that one thing I really like about FL is this regular EQ here. But it's not zero latency, but you can uh, be a little surgical with this one. And with that, and when I'm cutting that part out here, you probably notice that my voice doesn't sound as distorted or you'll hear that phase clashing. Uh, and that's because I cut out some of the, the dominant, like the dominant low end that would bother a mix. And it, this is actually ideal right here for when you're mixing uh, an 808, you know, if you're not trying to be destructive with it. You know, right here, you boost in the mids, but there's no nothing really in the middle of frequency content there because it's not as distorted as a cleaner 808 than usual. But if I sweep the frequency. You can you can hear the vowel change a little bit. So yeah, that that is another EQ, of course, that you want to uh, use here. 
if you if you should mix uh, or use that. I'm just giving y'all some keys here. Uh, here, but this right here, <laughs> man, the fruity parametric EQ2. This is really good. And one of the main things I like about 20 is that you can stretch it out. And I believe you can do that in 12 too, I think. But this EQ is really good because visually you can see it, everything. You can mess with the frequencies how you want, of course. It's zero latency, so it's a little CPU intensive. Again, this is a uh, you would more likely if you wouldn't uh, do uh, one thing uh, as far as like taking away or boosting the here, adding some resonance. Uh, you would definitely probably want to take away some of uh, this frequency over here because that is inaudible anyways. And sometimes when you have a little bit extra at lower frequency uh, around here, you get a cleaner vibe, but you still get the punch of the 808. Bring the track. I guess I'll bring the track back to for that example. And also, uh, with messing with a parametric EQ such as this one right here in FL Studio, uh, it's just really good. It's a really good stock plugin, and this actually set like a trend amongst uh, a lot of the plugin companies because it's a very useful stock plugin. And you'll you'll notice that a lot of plugins have actually gotten their swag from them. Oh my God, swag! The word swag in 2019. But anyway, so speaking of biting swag, of course. You have Fab Filter here, and it's the Pro Q3. I don't use it all as much, but it is a good EQ. Uh, it starts off, and I'm having difficulty putting it on the screen. Uh, it starts off as something plain and sweet, uh, where you can just drag a node here, and you can actually dictate what you want that node to be. Uh, let me go ahead and activate it here. All right. Come on, FL. <laughs> but here we go. So. Uh, again, this is a really good EQ. Very surgical, zero latency. You can switch shells. So if you're like one of those guys that actually bought this, you know, you got you got some pretty good stuff out of you. So high cut. Let's get a low cut in there. Boost. Uh, then you can continue to add notes. What I like about this is that it's very freehand. <laughs> Bad filter. God damn. But yeah, I really like that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that because that is a, a CPU intensive. Uh, plug in there uh, but it's it's really good um and then you, you see this the f6 here again you see that trend because uh the fruity parametric eq came out years before <laughs> either of these but as you can see here this is a dynamic eq as well uh the one i just passed is a dynamic eq is it's a parametric eq and then it's so a dynamic eq meaning that it is a parametric and has built-in compression on each band so you'll be able to control the frequencies easier so you'll notice a huge difference between that uh when you do a parametric eq and in a dynamic eq so this one right here is really cool uh this is my favorite to use it's a little less cpu in intensive than the other ones uh let's go ahead and play that 808 of course i'm struggling with fl turn this off now so if i get rid of it sweep you know One, so you can mess with the threshold. You can get some really cool, 
stuff to happen. Turn down the release, make it fast. Of course, that will just make the compression pass quicker. Let me stop messing with this because I this is this is my joint right here uh, along with the fab filter joint. Uh, but nah, let, let's get into some of the real extra stuff here. And I, I'm going to pull up another one after this. I know this is running a little long, but I think you guys should watch this video in its entirety. Uh, now shit gets real. Uh, this particular EQ is a little different from the other ones because analog modeling is based after the, ten, the Neve 1073. Chef 73 done a video on it. Very hilarious video at that. I was bugged out. I don't know why I should do more bugged out stuff like that. Uh, 808. Oh, and what makes this 808 very great is this distortion. So you heard it before. It's on, not on now. So yeah, you can get some rude 808s. Of course, you can do the same cut. You know, it would be ideal if you do the cut right here. And you also have a high pass filter, so you can actually do the high pass cut. Let's hear that with uh, in context of the music here. So, you know, Chef 73 is definitely one of my favorites. Definitely gets used a lot. So tell me how you feel about this video. Leave a comment below because I definitely want to hear from you guys if you EQ your 808s or not. You know, it's a pretty good discussion to have is just to talk about different techniques and stuff like that. I know there are people out there that have their own personal preference on how they like to do their 808s or whatever. Some people like to slap distortion on it and all that good stuff. But nonetheless, do what works for you. Oh, <laughs> no.